A very good Saturday afternoon. Thanks for clicking on to Vogan's European Outlook. Um, we are going to be starting to open the uh, the freezer door to the British Isles as we press through this weekend with uh, the snow transferring from eastern Scotland down into the southeastern part of England through the course of the next 36 hours. But the colder is gathering strength over the eastern half of Europe. Uh, we're seeing after record breaking warmth in fact across parts of the southeastern portion of the continent we are starting to see uh, some significant cold uh, building and and expanding over eastern europe as we go forward here i'm just trying to pull up the right map for you to be able to see the current temperatures over europe at the moment and you can see here that we are looking at some pretty frigid conditions here uh, this now starting to grow now this is what have been emphasized now for quite some time looking at the evolution of these type of uh, patterns uh, when of course you've got uh, a lot of mess over the British Isles but once you start to pick up in high pressure to the north of the British Isles the low pressure then starts to sink southwards and of course as that uh, ridge starts to kind of progress eastwards you then look for this building cold air to then start to, to get uh, pulled westwards over the continent. And by the time we reach the early part of next week, so Monday and Tuesday, this core of cold should essentially be over the British Isles here. Now, we might not be uh, necessarily talking about these figures exactly, but certainly this source region of bitterly cold air will and should be over the British Isles by the time we reach the early part of the week here but it's of course step by step here not rushing too quickly into things um but it certainly is a, a very very exciting weather pattern that's for sure so you can see here as we skip forward if i can try and find the cursor here so this is the current overview picture of the gfs and of course you've got the building cold over the northeastern part of the continent here we've got an area of low pressure here uh, over the western coast of Ireland here, lots of moisture getting uh, pulled in from the southeast, and of course we're seeing that rain, sleet, snow mix that we've seen all winter long because of the clash between Atlantic and Arctic here. But what we're going to see is this area of low pressure then uh, shifts southwards with uh, building pressure further north, and that is when things really start to open up here. So at the moment. We're drawing our air in from, say, Central Europe here, where uh, it's modest, modestly cold. Um, but as we press through the sequence, watch how the pressure rises to the north. That area of low pressure then gets pushed into France. And then what you're doing is essentially starting to open the floodgates of, uh, of bitterly cold polar continental air. And then as we press through into the end of the weekend... That's when things really get interesting because what we're going to get is a surge of moisture wrapping around this cold air and really look out from East Anglia into London, into the southeast part of England as well. We are going to see significant, likely disruptive snow during the course of tomorrow and then into tomorrow night. And then as we press into the early part of the week, then that core of cold, because the high pressure by this stage will be centred over Scandinavia, low pressure to the south, and of course you're drawing that air westwards into the British Isles here. So the pattern is evolving very, very nicely and very much as expected here, generally speaking. If you notice here that I've not been jumping on every individual model run, I've been looking at... Uh, I've, if I'm being honest, I've looked at uh, model solutions... And then literally not looked at it for a couple of days. And the reason why is because it's very easy to become uh, discouraged by putting out a forecast. And then all of a sudden that, that model, the same model run that went for this type of scenario, then backs off. It indicates that the Atlantic is winning back. The cold air isn't going to reach the UK. 
and then of course you get the next model run and it shows the cold air coming back so if you were to go by each individual model run you would literally be chopping and changing constantly your forecast based on these models which are not perfect so it, it's working out well it's evolving the way i expected and of course the the response from that sudden stratospheric warming is finally here it took a long time it took longer than normal because of that dripping paint type of uh, scenario where the the response took a while to filter right down through the troposphere and it's now that we're starting to see that response so by the time we get out to this is a uh, of course at nine o'clock tomorrow night the heavy snow should be starting to ease off from the eastern part of a uh, of of or should i say the southeastern part of england and then of course if you notice the isobars extending continuously all the way back to the cold source region here over eastern uh, far eastern europe here so in essence we get the snows, we're going to continue to see little streamers coming in because what we're going to be uh, seeing by the time we reach uh, 6 o'clock on, on Monday morning is intense cold air blowing across relatively warm water of the North Sea and that is going to pick up little narrow streamer bands of, of intense precipitation and of course when you've got the lowest 5,000 feet of, of the atmosphere well below freezing you have no problem getting a uh, frozen precipitation right down the sea level at the moment we've not we've had borderline temperatures within the final 5000 foot column of the atmosphere but when you start to get that pure dry cold air mass uh, from of a continental source with very very little moisture and it drags over the warm waters it pulls that moisture upwards and then, of course, you see these narrow feeder bands pushing in across the British Isles. So we could see some significant snowfall through uh, narrow bands within the UK here. Anywhere from really uh, the Aberdeenshire coast, even Caithness and Sutherland, all the way down to Kent. We could be seeing some very intense, very narrow bands of snow blowing in uh, across the North Sea here and in and even with gaps in the land for example we could see heavy snowfall extending right the way to the western part of the British Isles as well so we've got a very very interesting scenario coming up very similar to 2018 now of course the details are still unknown we're not going to know the details just yet but certainly the cold is coming folks it is going to have a significant impact on everybody's life across the British Isles, unless you're basically stuck indoors due to COVID, uh, you are going to be affected by this weather. Uh, and, you know, in terms of historical perspective, well, we'll have to wait and see exactly what we do get next week. We could get worse, we could get slightly less, but uh, I do think that we have got some uh, very significant cold on the way so as you can see here as we continue to skip through we keep getting these feeder bands pushing in off the north sea with a uh, bitterly colder extending all the way from russia right the way across the british isles and of course we've got isotherms uh, of minus uh, 10 even minus 15 believe it or not at 5,000 feet so uh, this is a cold air mass coming that's for sure so you can see here as we skip through the GFS sequence, uh, we continue to see this uh, easterly flow, bitterly cold easterly flow affecting all of the British Isles. Now we've got an area of low pressure here, we've got another one just moving into the chart here and it's as we press towards the middle and second half of next week, that is when we could get more interesting things coming in because we've got this world of cold sitting over the British Isles. We've got Atlantic moisture moving in. And of course, what happens when you've got uh, moisture and cold? We've got more snowfall. So, of course, this is fantasy land. It's a way, way out there. Um, but it's going to be very interesting indeed to see exactly what takes place um, through the remainder of this weekend and in the next year. But certainly significant snow across London, for example, East Anglia. And uh, we uh, definitely should see some very significant impacts coming up with this. 
So let's have a quick look at the 850 millibar temperature. And uh, well, it's not the anomaly; it's the actual air temperature here. So you can see here, 850 temperatures. And if you skip through the sequence, we've got, of course, the intense cold building over Eastern Europe as as forecast. And then as we press through the sequence, of course, that area of low pressure sinks south and then essentially just allows the door to open for this frigid air to drift westwards here underneath this area of high pressure. And it, it, what's impressive about this is this, this the length of time we have isotherm temperatures uh, of minus 10 to minus 15 here uh, for day after day over the British Isles here and um, that is going to um, make for several days potentially where very very few places in the UK may see two or three degrees for about three to five days uh, straight here so certainly a very very significant air mass and then of course you can see that the cold air according to the GFS at least by the time we reach Thursday may have a little bit of a battle between the Atlantic uh, and uh, and the colder uh, by the time we reach that this time frame here so let's have a very very quick uh, final look at the snowfall and uh, this is another important factor of course because you want to see a, uh, a solid snow cover from russia all the way to the british isles and of course you can see the amount of snow on the ground come thursday at 12 o'clock here and of course that means we've got minimal weakening of the air mass as it travels across this reflective snow cover into the British Isles. We should see a maximum cold from this air mass. So certainly very exciting times to come. Of course keep tuned here on, on uh, YouTube, marfogonweather.com and Twitter. And I'll be back in the next couple of days with more. Bye for now.